guy should be able to hear me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, it'll take a sec to catch up. I'm just letting the chat know. Uh, that I have fixed it, hopefully. Um, which will give me time to read you, to pull up the, uh, the form text and read it to you. So I had 200 send responses. So sorry. <laughs> um, hey, Docking, good to see you. Uh, and thank you for letting me know, everybody. Uh, Luke and Fasia, uh, and Alexa, da Alexia and Dana, I appreciate that. Uh, I did, in fact, look. All right. Loud keyboard sound. Yes. <laughs> I was typing to let you know. Um... So the, the sort of questions that I had in order, so this first variable, which you can see is a Boolean, is one that I, I hand coded, and I'll talk about that in just a sec. Well, I, didn't, I, I did not hand code it, but I decided what it would be based on other, um, I guess I hand coded it. What I'm saying is I didn't write true 10,000 times by hand. I, I used uh, Boolean operations like a, a normal person. Um, so the title of the survey was a very unscientific survey about how people assign agency to computers and software, uh, and then information that I provided the participants. Uh, oh, thanks, old player. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, I don't know why it's so loud. A compressor should be getting it. Actually, no, the gate should be getting it. Did I remove the gate? Hold, please. <laughs> Let me check out my filters. No, I've got a noise gate. Me. Uh, well, I'll be typing a lot, so if it becomes uh, super uh, upsetting, I will I will adjust the, the gate and it should be a little bit less loud. Uh, and then the information that I told the participants is, I'm just curious, I'm not collecting your email, but I think it will show up at the top by default if you're logged into a Google account to let them know. So uh, this data, um, some of the responses, like you can see here, this one are... Um, um, the the k anonymity here is uh bad right there are some unique responses uh but the only information that you know about these people is that they filled out this survey uh and then their responses on what one two three four five different questions so i feel pretty good about this being uh anonymizable and i'll put this all up on github once we have something we're sharing uh, so the first question here, which you can see this person has answered only ironically, and this person has answered yes. Uh, also, I think these first eight might be, and I possibly might be data poisoning because they are the top answers for all the questions um, all the way across the board. And nobody who answered no to the last question answered yes to all the rest of the question. So I'm a little bit suspicious of these particular answers. Uh, Faisa uh, says, uh, would using JavaScript be good for deep learning? I think there are some libraries for it. Um, I personally wouldn't. Um, I think it's possible. I think you will have a little bit of a struggle because most people don't do it. Um, but if you are very proficient in JavaScript and you have to run things client side for some reason, um, it's possible. All right, so the first uh, question here was, do you even jokingly slash informally talk about computers or software as if they were capable of acting independently or are social entities? E.g., oh, the computer said no, or this software is really trying to mess with me today. Um, and I am in these survey questions conflating quite a few things. <laughs> um, so I think it is, uh, uh, important to sort of like pick them apart. And I've been reading some of the research literature around these questions um, and having kind of a hard time finding super relevant stuff in adults because a lot of the research is in like developmental psychology and they assume that adults know that computers uh, don't have agency <laughs> and aren't social agents. Um, and based on, based on this uh, survey, that may not perhaps be uh, always the best assumption to make. Uh, but the things that I'm sort of like picking apart here are um, animacy. Do you believe computers are capable of doing things on their own? Um, sort of. Um, agency. Uh, is it capable of like acting upon the world again independently? Um, is it a social agent? So does it have a relationship to other entities? in the world, sort of very broadly. And a little bit also um, sort of like theory of mind. Do you think that computer programs have an internal mental state that they maintain, basically, um, and that you can perhaps access or influence? Um, and again, a lot of these are well studied in developmental psychology, sort of like as children develop them over time, um, sort of less studied in adults. 
And also, uh, very confusingly, these terms are also used for particular types of uh, grammatical markers in various languages, right? So in a lot of languages, you'll have anismacy markers on like uh, nouns that are like, this noun is capable of moving on its own, right? Or um, you may have uh, like a grammatical marking of agentiveness in a sentence, right? So in this sentence, this agent is acting on this patient using this instrument sort of thing, where agent, patient, and instrument are grammatical roles in the sentence. Um, and these, of course, can be, you know, very literal, but they can also be sort of like metaphorical, right? Like the wind might be agentive in, uh, in some languages. So there's a lot of complexity here that I'm very much glossing over because I'm just sort of interested about patterns of thought. So this first question is, uh, do you talk about computers like they are people in some meaningful way? And your options were yes, no, and then only ironically, right? So like, I might say like, ah, computers really giving me a hard time today, really arguing with me when I don't think that computers are people, um, but I may be uh, discussing them as if they are sort of as a joke, knowing that that is not my true belief and not expecting my interlocutor to also assume that that is my true belief. <laughs> yep. Uh, Alexi says, uh, of course not, but sometimes I tell GPT-3 what I think of it. Yeah, and I think that like swearing at computers is uh, as old as, <laughs> I think it's a very human behavior, right? Uh, if any of you have ever, you know, worked in the trades, uh, you'll often sort of like, well, I don't say that you will often, but it is not uncommon for people to like swear at their tools or, you know, uh, argue with materials or, you know, speak, like if you're loading hay, you might be like, get in there, you dang recalcitrant hay or something. I don't know that farming is... I'm going to leave aside the question of whether or not farming is a trade and talk about the next one. Uh, hey, old player, good to see you. All right, so question two, uh, that all of these people have answered yes. So like I said, these first uh, these first eight ones are all just the top answer for all of these. So I'm sort of suspicious of these as responses because um, I didn't get anybody who did like just the bottom answer for all of them. Uh, so the second question is, this is the sort of thing that I think a lot of people have strong opinions on. Uh, do you believe that large language models like BERT or GPT-3 are capable of understanding language in some meaningful way, right? Um, and I got a lot of people being like, well, what do you mean by understand? And I am only interested in patterns of belief here. So what do you mean by understand? Um, I am not a semanticist and I'm not interested in getting into it today. I'm really just seeing like, is there a lot of, um, correlation between different beliefs about sort of like animacy, agency, theory of mind, social agent beliefs of um, humans towards computers. Uh, and then the, uh, uh, if you're interested in sort of more citations and work on this, I put some of them in the um, things below uh, and I will pop that, the box, uh, those citations in the, uh, uh, Twitch chat as well, so that you have those uh, to check out if you're interested. And like I said, most of this work is in, you know, children. Anyway, <laughs> uh, also a lot of people thought I was being like snarky when I brought up the relationship between spell checkers and uh, large language models, and I'm really just curious. I am a social scientist. Uh, so the second one, so this first one is, do you talk about computers like they're people in some way? The second one is, do you believe that large language models understand in some way? This third one is, do you believe that spell checkers are in some meaningful way capturing what you meant to say? Um, so I don't know, if I thought about it, I might have rewritten this question slightly differently, but here I'm trying to get at like, do you think that spell checkers have a mental model of your intended utterance, right? Um, which is something that people do, right? So if I am editing something, I can usually figure out, oh yeah, this is the wrong word. Um, do spell checkers have that, right? Do they have that sort of model of your intended meaning? Uh, <laughs> Alexi says, uh, question two, uh, they do, but in the wrong way. So talking about whether language models are capable of understanding language. Um, and then, oh, sorry. So I should say for that second one, uh, maybe was also an option. Uh, and then for the third one about spell check, maybe was also an option. So for this first one, we have yes, no, and only ironically. For the second, we have yes, no, maybe. For the third, we have yes, no, maybe. For the fourth, um, it's just a yes, no. Do you work in technology as a field broadly defined? So do you consider yourself somebody who works in this field professionally? Uh, and then for 
Five, this last question here, uh, do you have training broadly defined in human cognition, neuroscience, or a social science, e.g. sociology, linguistics, anthropology, etc.? And that is yes, no. So what I'm picking apart here is, do you have a professional understanding, maybe, uh, of these systems, or have you interacted with them in a professional way? Because often I find that people who have professional experience in technology tend to be um, you know, <laughs> you've seen how the sausage is made. And uh, was it someone was talking this morning? Um, it's a locked account, so I don't want to talk about which account it was uh, about how, you know, one of the the Twitter data centers is down and how if another Twitter data center goes down, Twitter is going to go down for a lot of people because um, of the, the heat wave in California right now. And um, how, you know, if you've worked in technology, you have a uh, you can have a pretty accurate idea of how fragile some of these systems are and how sort of milk makeshift, whereas if you're outside of technology, um, technology companies would really like you to believe that everything is super stable and well engineered and not going to break. Uh, so. Uh, and then, uh, yes, that last one is, again, have you had training in thinking about um, just generally like social agents and their interaction, uh, the brain, cognition? Um, have you thought about a thought? Um, and I purposely didn't include philosophy there because philosophers, bless them. Um, It's not always the most empirical field, let me put it that way. And I am, at heart, a die-hard, dyed-in-the-wool empiricist. Um, and also, a lot of philosophers have said a lot of just buckwild stuff about language models that has no relationship to the models themselves. So um, yes, I did not include philosophy on purpose, if you're wondering why it's not in that list of fields. So um, yeah. Uh, so that are those are the questions that I asked uh, and the wording that I used. Um, I had 210 responses. And then this one here, this first column, computers know, is a variable that I coded, which is, did you say yes or maybe to um, either the question about uh, language models being capable of understanding or spell checkers being capable of understanding, right? So do you, uh, spell checkers in some meaningful way capturing what you meant to say, right? So uh, if you said no to both of those questions, it would be false for you. Otherwise, it would be true. And the reason that I did that coding um, is I'm still trying to decide what type of <laughs> regression I want to do for this. So here are our to-dos now that we've sort of gone over the data. Um, there is some missingness, not a whole bunch, but there is some. So if I scroll down, you might be able to see some just really quickly with your eyes. Uh, I'm not seeing any just like super quickly, but there is some missingness, just believe me on that. So we're gonna have to decide how to deal with that. Um, which actually, let me add that to my uh, to-dos. Decide how to handle missingness. Um, I think what we may do is we may just delete those rows because people didn't complete the five question multiple choice survey, um, which is fine. Uh, Alexi said, it would be interesting to make the same survey replacing computer with human. Yeah, I would strongly assume <laughs> that people would say that, uh, you know, human editors are capable of capturing of what you meant to say. Um, humans in like a conversational setting are capable of understanding. Um, yeah, I strongly believe that. And you will probably refer to humans as independent social entities in, in casual conversation. Um, and that's just sort of like the typical state of humans towards other humans, um, certainly adults. No. Uh, so here are our to-dos. So the first is uh, to do some visualization. Um, and I did a little bit of sort of like off-camera work, just thinking about like what I want this to look like. Um, and of course, I can't show you this, but this paper uh, is on gather plotting. I'll pop it in the chat if you want to check it out. Um, so it's a visualization research paper on a particular type of plotting that I think uh, so that thing I just pasted in the chat, remove the parentheses <laughs> from the, uh, uh, here, let me, I'll paste it again correctly. Uh, doop, 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 doop. Turns out parentheses are uh, good in, in URLs. Um, is a 
a particular type of plot which basically looks like a waffle chart um, where you have sort of your categories on the axes and then you have sort of a, uh, a facet within your graphing space and then counts are represented by um, dots that are filled in with a color. And I thought this might be a particularly good way to represent this data because we have a lot of binary distinctions, right? So. Um, and we also have some tertiary distinctions. So trinary, three-way distinctions. So uh, do you work in tech? Do you have training in a social science? Um, that's binary, both of those. Um, we could, so as I've done in coding this variable, we could treat belief in computers as binary, uh, in computers sort of like agency, animacy, social. I'm just gonna call it peopleness, <laughs> just as a handy shorthand, uh, but know that when I refer to that, I am referring to a variety of specific concepts and not like whether they should vote, right? Um, I'm not uh, I'm not saying that people who say that, you know, well, maybe, maybe there is some degree of understanding in large language models believe that like Sophie the robot is a person. Um, and unfortunately I had to, because of length restrictions, go with a little bit of a misleading <laughs> YouTube video title, but You've been with me for a while at this point. You've seen sort of like the questions that I was asking what I'm trying to think about, and I've provided some citations for more reading. So hopefully it's clear what I'm asking about here. Also, yes, I do have a Python mug, but I'm working with R because uh, for this type of data analysis, I just, it is much easier and faster for me to use R. Um, unfortunately, these cool plots that I really liked um, don't <laughs> seem to actually be available uh, to use. So the, uh, the URL that the, the authors talk about in both the GitHub repo and the paper is now dead. Um, and it was from, you know, 2017. So it's, you know, one of those things where academic papers and the digital artifacts associated with them just decay over time. And in this case, the hosting is no longer available. And I don't think there is an R package for this. Um, um, so we're going to have to do basically recreate this ourselves. Um, so that's the first thing I want to do. Uh, and I think that I can get there using waffle charts. Uh, and actually, can I, just, hmm, I think I can actually pull up, uh, let's see. I think I can pull up in, uh, here, the, uh, help page. Uh, I'm trying to show you what the waffle charts look like, and no, okay, so it's not gonna uh, not gonna work in just the the help, but basically, ooh. <coughs> Um, it is a chart just like the gather plots where you have um, a grid and the colors with which the grid are filled in represent the count of values, right? So like uh, a pie chart uses um, radians, which is, by the way, just from visualization research, not a great way to represent information. <laughs> uh, a waffle chart uses area and that area is, you know, divided into um, um, waffle squares <laughs> to uh, represent, uh, again, count data, which is what we're looking for. Uh, and I think if I combine that with facets, which are a way of taking a chart and making it into mini charts based on the value of one of the variables, um, we can have a pretty good visual representation of what's going on with this data. Uh, <laughs> hi, AM, welcome. Um, yeah, so that's my first plan. And that might take us most of today. Um, Probably, we'll see. It may in fact be very quick and easy. I've never used this waffle package before, but it should work pretty well with uh, ggplot2. So you can see I have the, the tidyverse here. Um, so we'll find out. I said that, but actually the uh, uh, glyphs noted, hmm. Actually, I don't know that this is gonna work super well with ggplot2, so we'll find out. Like I said, I've never used this package before. Can I switch these? Uh, beans, I know there's a way to do it. Uh, is it this one? I guess I can just do that <laughs> so you can see more of it. Um, yeah, anyway. So let's hop in it and read in our daity, daity, read in a daity, and then we'll get going. <laughs> Sorry, I have uh, apparently kind of uh, out of it this morning. 
All right, that should be good. And I installed this last night and it looked like it was correctly installed in the packages list. So we shouldn't have to worry about it. Oh, Alexander says it's programmer's day today. Hmm, happy programmer's day. Uh, all right, so, and I was just looking at the help for this. So let's just copy and paste this. And the reason that I wanna look at what the code is to visualize it first is because, uh, I'm just gonna uh, make this a little bit better fit for my screen, um, is because I wanna make sure that when I am, um, when I am preparing the data to be visualized using this library, I prepare the data appropriately, right? So what is this part's named vector of values to use for the chart? Keep factor levels for consistent legends across wall plans. Okay, so I th think what we're gonna have to do, okay, so first of all, let's read in the data. The da -da -da -da. Uh, and let's do underscore CSV because we're using uh, do, do, do. it's this one uh, underscore CSV because we're using uh, tibbles, uh, parts with column specifications. That looks good. OK, so from here, can I just pass in the uh, computer no factor of the column? No, insufficient values in manual scale, 27 needed, but only five provided. All right, uh, any of you have used, uh, let's get rid of some of these. All right, so all of these ones that have a uh, uh, provided value, I'm just gonna remove. All right, and I had 200 people, so let's say 20, actually I had 210, so let's say 21, does that help? Okay, so it has to be divisible. Ah, all right, well, this plot is nothing. <laughs> this plot is literally blank, so the plot should be showing up right here behind me. Uh, oh, Alexi says, uh, my mom congratulated me on Programmer's Day. She said she's proud of me. Well, that's nice. Insufficient values in manual scale, 27 needed, but only nine provided. Where is the 27 coming from, I wonder? So let's just look at uh, the dimensions of this to see if there's a 27 in there somewhere. Uh, uh, what about just dimensions of data? Because it should be 2010 by six. Yeah, okay, so that is right. Um, and it's 2010, not 2011, because it's not counting the um, column headers as a row. Where is this 27 coming from? So this I'm assuming needs to be provided. Keep equals true. Uh, what is that keep value doing? Ah, mm -mm -mm. uh, ah, uh, it needs to be a named vector of values. All right, so the issue here is that um, data.computers, so this column here is not a named vector. It should be, uh, what would we read it in as? Uh, just like a Boolean vector, I'm pretty sure. So that wouldn't be named. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's a logical column. So I need to, let's see if we can do, uh, is name, uh, yeah, let's just try it. I don't know if that's a, yeah, it seems right. All right, uh, <laughs> is this names, representing calendar dates and times, functions to get or set the name of an object. Okay, so I should be able to do this. So at this point we are giving this names. I'm not familiar with this package. Now, I'm not super, I sort of know about named vectors, but it's been a while since I used them for much. All right, that's did nothing. Ooh. Named vector, this function will turn a ggplot waffle chart of the values. The individual values will be summed, and each series you can perform appropriate value transformation ahead of time to get the desired waffle effect. Okay, so I think what we need to do is get the count of 
the computers know, right? Uh, oh, right, table. Okay. Uh, so can I then do that as a named vector? No, so that's getting the names of the table. Can I Uh, let me know if you have any questions about what I'm doing. I'm just sort of futzing about trying to get it to work because I'm not 100% sure what the data structure is supposed to look like. Uh, so since tables have names, can I use that as a named vector? I can. That's not right. <laughs> oh, hey, it worked. Look at that. Okay, fabulous. So what this is showing is the proportion of people who responded with Yes, I think that this is a, um, you know, who said yes or maybe to either the question about spell check or the question about um, the other one, <laughs> uh, large language models. So another fun day with R. Yeah. Uh, so we've gotten it working. So we just need to take the table. Uh, and table is like count in, in Python. Do, do, do. All right, so let's uh, make sure that we have the code that does work up here in our script so we can refer back to it. All right, um, so that only did two variables. Hmm, that should be right, yeah. And I'm just gonna make this a little bit narrower. All right. Uh, and then I think title was the thing for title. Uh, yes or maybe to any meaning question. That's not a very good title, but it is just to sort of like, let me look back at this, uh, this waffle plot and see what it looks like. Okay, fabulous. So that is helpful. Now I'm wondering, can I add a second dimension to this chart? So um, you can't really see, but what it looks like on the the archive link that I pasted above is, um, so it's like, a, you know, on the x-axis, you have one value broken apart. On the y-axis, you have another value broken apart. So you can look at uh, your variables across. You can look at counts of one variable across other variables, right? So I think what would make sense is I would love to see uh, let's see, basic waffle plot. So this was the first one, right? Yes, no, or maybe. Um, and I think I should be able to uh, do this to do and pull that out and remove the title. I should be able to pipe this into that and just change one thing, which would be great. We love to change just one thing. Let's make sure this is good. All right, so now if I do, instead of that column, I do another column like to assign computers agency, including jokes, I should see three. Yes, fabulous, okay. So you can see that most people do it um, and about over half do it ironically. Uh, and let me move myself. I'm using all of these. <laughs> uh, where can I put myself where I won't be in the way? I'll just yeah, I'll just keep myself here. Um, I'll just sort of juke back and forth so you can see behind me. Uh, okay, so that is interesting. And then to do if I want to look at the uh, what was the next question? Oh yeah, about large language models and understanding. Um, are those in the same order? Right, they're different colors. So here we have the only ironically, which is in red between the no and the yes, which I feel like is like a reasonable way of doing it. But here we have the maybe in green and the yes in blue and the no in here and the middle is in red. And I would say that 
this is something I've been thinking about. Is yes, no, maybe an ordinal scale, right? Is maybe in between yes and no? And I would say that it is, and I'm not gonna mess with it now, but just something that I am thinking about. Uh, and then if I wanna do uh, the other one, which was about spell check. So that was about large language models. This one's about spell check. Uh, and you can see that people are much less overall less likely to say assign sort of understanding of an internal state to spell check. Uh, left bottom would be good. Yeah, I guess I'm using that. Ah, there I am. Uh, I'm assuming that's the left. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's pretty good and that's pretty good. And that's about what I expected, right? That more people would be willing to say that large language models have some degree of understanding than spell check does. Um, and then for this one, uh, this is like, do you work in tech? Uh, most people did, that's not surprising given my social uh, network. And then this one is, and I know that I'm copying and pasting a lot. These are all gonna go into one big chart um, and I'm gonna break it apart by, uh, other variable. So it'll all work. And then the social science training, um, interestingly, uh, only slightly over half said yes, which is surprising to me because I feel like I'm a very social sciencey person in terms of my, my social network. But I guess if you look at the population as a whole, half of it does not have social science training of some kind. So probably a big difference. Okay. So now we have um, these individually. Now I want the marginal relationships between them, right? So I want to split out the people who, let's say, let's start with work in tech and work in social science because I think that, that is going to be easier. Um, so if I do, and then I group by, And then I do a table, will this work? I don't actually know that this is gonna work, right? This is just me trying stuff. As you apply to an object of class character. Interesting, okay. Time to Google something, tidyverse, group by character vector. Uh, because by default, when you read things in, um, factor is false. Actually, that might just be easiest is just to start from the top that have uh, strings as factors be true. <laughs> oh, do I have to be in the same line? Yeah. Uh... Oh, can I not do that? Let's see, first the rows, imputed, file. All right, I guess I can. Uh, so a big thing about tibbles is that they don't do strings as factors by default. Um, interesting. Uh, yeah, all subjects are good except politics. I mean, I think it's important to study politics. Uh, did I make a table with question and answers green, yes, orange, no? Um, so it's just sort of like, this is happening automatically, right? Like I am not specifying any of these. Oh, and here you can see one of our, our missing misses, right? Uh, is up here, somebody just didn't answer the question. So I do need to do something with uh, removing missing rows. And I usually, I think I usually use janitor for that. Janitor R remove missing rows. <laughs> Moving empty rows. I'm just looking uh, at uh, search results in another table. Uh, then moving arrays, remove empty. Ah, it is. Uh, and then let me double check this. So I'm reading the documentation for the remove empty. Uh, oh, so that's only for ones that are, are um, composed entirely of empty values. Uh, Let's see. So janitor is just a data cleaning package. You might be able to tell from the name. Uh, actually, look, I can do this in here so you can see. Janitor. Do I not have it installed? 
Uh, here we go. Oh, actually, that's great. Uh, I do need one and two variable tabulations, so I may actually be able to use janitor for that. That'd be nice. Uh, can I get the vignette? Clean names, blah, blah, blah. Clean names is probably the most commonly used feature in uh, Janet. Everybody, everybody loves clean names. Um, so it does things like remove spaces and lowercase everything, et cetera. But I, you know, I did this by hand previously because I cared about what it looked like. Remove just your move, constant, directly consistent, round of five, round of action. <laughs> it's exploring. Major functions. Okay, so table with table with a Y, a better version of table, tidyverse oriented replacement for table, which is great. Um, so the tidyverse things I'm doing in here are I'm using a, a tibble, so you can see that because it's an underscore, not a dot. Uh, and also I'm using uh, pipes. Uh, da -da. All right, so I could do table by this and that, and then maybe just use it directly. Uh, so let me, I realize I'm sort of bouncing around, but let me try that, because then I don't think I need to do the group by, which would be great. Uh, all right, so we've got our data, and then we're going to, oh wait, hold up. First off, and since we're gonna be using multiple, uh, yeah, that's fine. Uh, since we're gonna be doing multiple um, things with a janitor package, I think that it is fine to import the whole thing, even if it's not the most memorable uh, thing to do. So the things that we were looking at were social science training and then what is it, work in tech, right? Uh, yep, work in tech. That's the one. And this will just run those two. Okay, fabulous. Uh, and then you can see we have one uh, no answer in there. And then if I just, if I just do this, will it work? No. Cool, 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 cool. Okay, so I think what we're gonna need to do is we're going to extract, which is the column and which is the row? Mm -hmm. Let's look at the structure of this. Okay, so uh, it's a data frame. So if we want to extract, hmm. Mm. Okay, so here's the thing about Waffle. Waffle is only gonna take in that named vector, right? So Waffle, right, this is the data structure we're working here. We got a little table. Um, I don't care about these NAs. <laughs> I'm just gonna ignore them because um, that's missing data, right? So the people who don't have social science training and don't work in tech are here. That's seven people. The people who do have social science training and do work in tech are here. That's 89 people. The people who, I'm assuming that social science here is row wise, sorry, column wise, right? So the people who don't have social tra science training and do work in tech are 20. That can't be right. This has got to be column wise. So this is just based on my sort of like knowledge of my, my followers. Uh, yeah. Robbie says, uh, how is this a related topic? So I am um, analyzing survey data about people's beliefs about that topic, um, which is why it's related. So, let's assign this to a variable. So this is meaning X tech. All right, and I don't actually need that structure information with it. All right, so we have this, and then if I look in it, so no will be the people who don't work in tech. Yes will be the people, yes will be the people who do work in tech seems likely. Okay, 
So if I want, <laughs> okay, uh, people who don't work in tech. And the reason that I think that it's that way is because um, I have a Twitter account that's very focused towards people who are professionally in language technology or technology. Um, so I imagine that most of the people who follow me and thus would answer the survey do work in tech. Um, so if I wanted to get, da, 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 uh, and then specifically I wanted the people who don't work in tech, then that would be the no. Will that work? All right, fabulous, that works. The issue now, <laughs> beans. Uh, okay, let's look at this. So we have A, B, and blank, which I'm guessing is uh, looking at the full table. No, and then yes. No, and then yes. All right, so let's look at the help for waffle really quickly and see how I can pass in uh, a vector of names. Uh, I think I'm going to need to, okay, I think I'm going to need to rename this. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, all right. So if I do the names here, I should just get nothing. Oh, interesting, okay. So then if I do that, I should get, uh, what do we say first? No and then yes, right? I'm pretty sure that's what we said. Because we're gonna have to do this for everything if we wanna get the marginal results, which is what I'm most interested in. So then if we redo this, because I've changed the names, that didn't work. All right, well, okay, shoki doki. Is it because I'm re-extracting it? One second, I'm on top of this now, I need to move over here. Uh, okay, so if I'm... So why are the names here a and B and blank rather than being no and yes. It's because I've extracted this and what I want to extract is this. Ugh. Yeah, oh, oh, that's right. So columns are work in tech and rows are social science. Uh, so if we look at just the data, that should make sense. Rows are social science training and the columns are work in tech. Okay, excellent. That is what I was expecting. So I need these two attributes together because one of them is the names. Uh, whoosh, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Um, can I just assign names in the middle of here to be SS training uh, and then the social science training and then go from there? Is that going to work? Two arguments passed to names. Do I need to do it as a character? Is that gonna work? So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to pass this information from this table to the names and what it's looking for is, um, it's looking for a concatenation? No, oh, okay, yes, it's, it's looking for the item to get the names from and I want to use something else as the names. So, uh, names to character vector R. How to add a name called character vector data from an R, creator vector is names in R. Okay, yes. How do I do this? What is the syntax?
So what I'm going to need to do is something like set names and then, so this is the value, these are the names. So this is the value, this is the names that I'm extracting from this table. Names attribute must be the same length as the vector, two. Okay, so if I just look at this, that's the error I get. Ah, I see, gotcha, 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 gotcha. I am looking at the wrong uh, value. Two arguments passed to names, which requires one. Oh, right, because it's this thing that I didn't get rid of, so let's get rid of that. Pew pew. All right, does that work? Where's the blue stuff coming from? What is this blue stuff? Right, so you can see a lot of things here are just neither no nor yes. And if we look at uh, this table, you can see that we have, so we are looking specifically at those who do not work in tech. So no here. So we have 20 who say yes, seven who say no, and one other. And I don't know where that's coming from. So let's just look at this whole thing. Is it because I'm saying a specific number of rows? But this is divisible. Okay, let's say seven and see if that changes anything. Okay, now there's only one. And if we say four, there's still only one. Okay, uh, let's remove NAs right after we read in the data. I think that that's what's gonna be uh, the uh, be the best, remove missing, remove all non-complete rows. Fabulous. And we're gonna start from the top, <laughs> and I think that will help. Uh, so we have this one where we're only getting the people who do have training, so we're tabling, uh, social science training and working in tech, and now it's still there. Where are these mystery values coming from? I don't like them. All right, what does this keep value do? Maybe it's coming from that. Keep factor levels, i.e. for consistent. Okay, what if I just say no? Still there. What if I go back to saying more rows? Do we get more of them? We do. What are these missing values? Where are they coming from? If we look at this, we should not have, yeah, they're not coming from here. If we look at this, it should just be a vector of length too. Sure is. If we look at this, it should just be a vector of length too. Well, you look at that. Where are these blue mystery values coming from? Yeah, I just removed all the NAs. Ain't none. <laughs> uh, I don't know where this is coming from. Yes, the answer is zero. <sighs> so they're not coming from NAs. They're coming from somewhere else. Maybe it's because seven plus 19 is not divisible by 21. Uh, what is that, 26, right? So if we did 26, is it because of division? Okay, and if we did four, but that's divisible by 26, right? I'm very sure that 26 is divisible by four, but let me double check. Oh, it's not, okay, gotcha. So if we did 13, 
Oh, it's only divisible by two and 13. Okay, gotcha. So it's adding the extra blues as padding. This is a very hands-on sort of thing. All right, so, and then uh, I should do the title equals social science training don't don't work in tech all right so then we should be able to do the same thing with the yeses Ugh, that's a pain in the butt Uh, so this should be the same thing, but the yeses, and I don't, I don't know how big this group is, so I'm going to have to figure out what it's divisible by and have a nice factor of that. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, 9, 3, 89, so that is 182, which I'm pretty sure off the top of my health, to, off the top of my head is not divisible by 13. Oh, it is. Never mind. We're good. Great. Uh... Oh, wait, but this should also be this thing is wrong. Do work in tech. All right, so now we should be able to put these two together and look at them together and have a nice visual representation of a two-way relationship. So let's let's do that. Let's give ourselves a little treat. Um, and I always forget the command for having multiple plotting. It's like par mf something. Uh, R two plots together. Let's do that. That's the example. Um, mm -mm -mm. That's right. It's uh, mf row. So I can now do something like uh mf row i think you can just say uh concatenating one and two so that should change that's right par mf row and then equals that's an extra one so that should work Boop. All right, so now when I do one plot, it should be on one side, and the second plot should be on the other side. What? Why did that not work? Uh... So what that should do is it should change the plotting output, and I should be able to have two together. Did I actually run it? Sure did. So if I did, if I just plotted our data, it should only take up half of the screen. And then if I do it again, it should add that to the second one. Yeah, interesting. Hmm. Cool. Um, par mf row ggplot. I don't think these are in ggplot, but that might be helpful. Let's see. I'm just looking to see if other people had these same issues. All right, uh, so let me try grid extra. Um, I'm gonna add a package. Doop. All right, make sure for replicability, add it here, don't let the things I'm doing in, do we do. All right, so I may need to use, I may not be able to use um, something that changes the plotting device directly. Uh, all right, so not tech. Yes, tech. Oh, sorry. Wrong assignment variable. Let me just fix it. Gotta, gotta do the, uh, you know. Da -da -da. 
I'll set, I'll set this as a section as well. Um, social science training by working in tech. Uh, and then we're going to use this sort of like, the reason I'm starting with these two is because they're the only two that are strictly binomial. Um, the rest of them are, are multinomial, and I want to make sure that we have a general idea of how to make this work with the simplest possible use case first. All right, and then we should be able to do grid.arrange. You in there? Sure is. All right. So that would be not tech, and then yes tech. And I don't think these are actually uh, in the environment yet. No, they sure ain't. Okay. Uh, so let me run these, add these as variables. Do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. All right, no errors, fabulous. Uh, and then I should be able to say something like, and call equals two. Right, they're not the same. <laughs> uh, cool, okay. So they're not the same acrossness, right? Um, they are different sizes, which is why it's looked like that. But now we do have woo, two plots on the same screen. Oh, very weird. Let me do that. Now you'll be able to actually see it. There we go. Now we do have two plots on the same screen. Um, it is, if I zoom, I don't think it's going to show up. No, uh, uh, incomprehensible, <laughs> I would say, uh, right? Because this one on the side is much wider than this other one on the side so i'm gonna need to say that this one is you know much bigger across but i'm pretty sure you can do that with grid extra uh let's see let's see let's see what did i use i did uh Arrange. So I'm just grid dot arrange, which I'm pretty sure is from grid extra. There it is. All right, uh, layout matrix optional layout. That sounds like what we want. Mm -mm -mm. Can, I, can I click on it? Okay, you're not gonna tell me, huh? A G table layout page to place multiple grobs and arrange grobs. I see. Grobs must be a package internal term. Um, layout matrix, optional layout. Great. Can I see one of these layout matrixes, please? And thank you. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, what, what does a layout matrix look like, friend? Does it have its own thing? It sure don't. All right, well, now I'm gonna have to look online for it. Uh, let me do that. So that was grid arrange layout matrix example. That's what I'm looking for now. Over multiple position layout matrix. Define plot layout. Uh, all right. Uh, da, da, da. Ah, okay, so I can do something like this. Right, so that's what a layout matrix would look like, and this one should have the same plot over the top of three other plots. Uh, and I think I can actually do this programmatically, maybe. I'm trying to figure out if I can programmatically do uh the figuring out how wide they should be based on how many people answered the question um so let's see i had if we look at this ss training tech we mess up back here fo, 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 fo. Mm -hmm. okay so here we had what 26 and here we have like way more than 26 um was it call some right Mm, of SS. I don't know if it works with tables. It sure don't. All right. Um, 
Yeah, okay, only all numeric variables. Maybe this is not all numeric because this first one is actually a row. So this table object is a little bit funky. Um, but we know that we have, we know that we have 210, nope, we have 208 total because we've removed two. Um, so what I'm just gonna do is, because uh, they're both divisible by 13, right? And on this one, they, oh, sorry, let me look at the plots. So on this one, do, do, do. This one is two across, and this one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So the um, size is one by seven. So if I do something like one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That might work. Uh, I'm pretty sure there is a way to do it. Uh, uh, what was the argument called? Uh, nope. 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 Layout underscore matrix. Uh, boop. Uh -huh. Uh, and actually it needs to be eight columns, right? Is that gonna work? No, because my parentheses are unbalanced. That makes sense. Yes, because we don't need that one. So those should now be balanced. So let's actually do it correct. I was wrong. I did in fact need that parenthesis. Interesting. Um, so let's get rid of the titles. I think the titles here are doing me a disservice. So let's just scloop, pop them right out of there. Don't need them. Because uh, we sort of know which one of these is which. No, that doesn't work. Okay, what if we reduce the size here by one? Is that gonna look better? Yes, but also I need to balance my parentheses again. Cool, 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 cool. No, that looks bad. Why does it look bad? Four, five, six, seven, eight. Hmm. What if I remove this one and then say that it's seven? Is it maybe a dimensional mismatch like that? Nope, sure isn't. Is it the existence of the legend, perhaps? No. Also, I'm assuming there's an argument for whether or not there's a legend as well. Maybe I need to reduce the padding? Hmm. Alexi says, struggling, sitting the whole day with the same code, struggling with some code. Uh, watch other person struggling with some code in the evening. How's my life come to this? Yeah. Uh, oh, Bean, sorry. It's so far off the screen, you can't see. There you go. So this is what it looks like right now. Hmm. Maybe it just needs to be like twice as wide. That might work. Okay, so uh, what it's doing is that it is uh, responsively changing the size of the grid 
based on the um, uh, size of the window. Which is okay when we have two things, but I want to do like eight things, right? Um, kind of an issue there. If I wasn't so set on this one single particular visualization, uh, we could do this a lot more quick and dirty, but I want it to be beautiful, gosh darn it, and I have a strong vision in my head, and I'm gonna push it into there. Because, right, this is, I think, a very clear representation, right? So you can see that most of the people who answered the survey work in tech, right? They're in this big one over here. Very few of them don't, that's that little one over there. But of the ones that don't over there, a higher proportion have training in social sciences, right? So this isn't very informative to me. Um, and you can also look at this and look like, oh, it looks like the uh, overall ratio of people who do and don't have training in social sciences is fairly even, right? Like there's a lot of information that you're getting here. Um, obviously there would be more if the labels were good and if it weren't a blue green or sorry, red green distinction, which is not great for colorblindness, it's just the default. Um, if anyone can't see the difference, let me know and I'll take a little, little detour to fix the color uh, difference. <sighs> but there's something about the way that it's, um, automatically readjusting the size of things that is causing an issue. Um, and yes, so which one doesn't have the padding? Only this one doesn't have the padding. This one does. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try removing the padding from both of them. Uh, and I'm also gonna try, if I do NA, will that remove the legend? No. Ugh. Oh, what's the error here? Oh, right. First of all, if I try this with the uh, correct. Okay, I accidentally just ran the whole thing. Uh, so let's try just these two, right? Da, 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 da. Okay, so that did nothing to remove the legend. Removing the padding doesn't look like it really interesting so what i'm noticing as i go back and forth is that i think because it's bigger the um the one directly behind me is having more changes in size i just want it to look good all right uh how do i remove let's see waffle plot remove legend Surely there's a way, right? Nope, somebody asked on GitHub. Ah, okay, so you gotta add a theme. Hey, these are kind of better. Um. Did I not run that whole thing? We should have no legend now. And yet we do. Uh, Robbie says, is it the same as ggplot facet wrap? Kind of. Um, but the problem is these aren't ggplot, so I can't facet wrap them. Uh, and I don't think there's a good way to do waffle plots in ggplot. I guess I could check. Uh, but I didn't see one last time I looked. And it's not auto-completing for me, which is also a little bit worrying <laughs> when I'm searching. Uh, let's see. Oh, here's someone who wants to uh, create waffle plots and combinations with facets. Uh, and it was answered by, who is this answered by? That they are gonna do a geome waffle. Oh my gosh. Um, so I can't get rid of the cookie notification. Uh. Mm. Yeah, 
Yes. <laughs> uh, so it is possible, but it is very hacky. And also you need to figure out the percents to get things to sum evenly by hand. So it would be possible to do this in ggplot2. I'm not like, here's the thing. This works, right? This looks okay. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out how to get it to look better. Uh, and I think we can get there, right? It's just going to take some time. Um, can I change the... Oh. I think this is probably going to be one of our more unbalanced answers. So we might want to do another one just to see what it looks like. Um, but can we... So my question is, is this resizing coming from Waffle or is it coming from... Uh, the greater range. So this, ah, ah, okay. Hopefully nothing went back for you. Uh, so what if I mess with the size? Will that help? Oh, no, wait, it should be the other way around. So this one should be one and this one should be 14. No, okay. So I think this like uh, resizing thing is happening by greater range. I don't know why par MFRO isn't working. Um, the nice thing is uh, yeah, I can just sort of manually adjust it until it looks good and then, you know, save it from there. So I think I'm okay with just like dealing with this for now. Um, and I might actually do it as four columns and see if that helps. That's a little bit better. And let's go back to our idea of doing it as seven, two, 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 and see if that helps even more. That's better. And then if we do it as eight. Okay, so I think once we get rid of the, um, yeah, oh, fabulous. Okay, that looks great, actually. I'm happy with that. Uh, yeah, and as I just said, that's gonna work. All right, yes. If I do this, am I gonna get an error about mismatch? Oh, I didn't. Interesting, very interesting. Is there a difference between here? Oh, the number of columns is doing nothing. It's being overridden by the matrix layout. Cool. So I could do like so and just adjust like that until I am happy with it. Um, all right. I'm willing to do that. <laughs> uh, yeah, and like they're not exactly even, and if this is the sort of thing that really bothers you, you may be bothered by it, but um, I'm gonna call that close enough for government work. Um, this is not government work, I'm just doing this for free, uh, <laughs> but I think that'll work, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, Robbie says I could use the grid package to execute the grid code. I'm, I'm happy enough with this. I think it'll work. And I think I could also do, you know, just sit here and tune it a little bit to get it until it looked really good, but I don't care that much. So um, I'm happy enough with this. Let's stick with this for now. So um, the other thing I'm going to need to do... is add labels. Let's check the waffle package help again. <laughs> uh, is there an easy way to do it in waffle? Give it an invite, blah, 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 blah. Let's look at the little blah, 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 blah. use glyph. I mean, I could, I don't really want to mess around with fonts, but I could use glyphs, right? Like, do you work in tech or not? Like, do you have a computer or a, I don't know, a computer with an X to it or something? Um, here's why labs text for below the chart. Highly suggested this be used to give the one square equals YYZ uh, relationship if it is not optional. Okay, so what we can do is, um, and xlab shouldn't mess things up too bad uh not in tech uh 
All right, so now when we do these, we should have helpful plot. Oh, fascinating, 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 fascinating. Uh, X lab equals work in tech, yes, yes, yes. Position, position, none. Well, there should be a string and numeric vector. Do I get that for this one? No. What? <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. Helpful. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Beautiful. Great. Perfectly fine. I'm happy with that. Um, except that I have accidentally removed my other legend, which I did in fact want. <laughs> uh, so uh, let me unremove that and then do this and then it should all work and be beautiful. Fabulous. I'm happy with this. We're just going to keep going. Um, there we go. Okay. Yeah. So that's a pretty clear, uh, I would say, um, what's it? And then can I use grid align to add a title to the whole chart? If I can, I think that would be the easiest way to do it. And we've got so much information in a single chart that I still think is lookable at and understandable. So I'm just going to look up the grid arrange add title. Whew, wow, that felt like a lot. Add title using for multiple plots made using them. Blah, blah, blah. All right, and then we should be able to say top global title. Uh, do you actually, you know what? I'm just going to put the text of the question, um, which I think is pretty straightforward to. Uh, do this may look sort of weird. Sure does. Uh, So I'm going to add a bunch of new lines to make it a little bit more comprehensible. And if I make it bigger, voila, look at that. It's a chart. Yay. <laughs> um, great. Happy with that. Let's move on to doing some of the other things. So this was, again, we did this one because this was the simplest possible uh, explanation. Let's make a chart of something else that is more interesting. And my first sort of general question is um, the relationship. And we're, I'm just going to keep it to two-way relationships for now, just for my uh, mental health. <laughs> Put it that way. Uh, let's look at the relationship between... Um, uh, this factor that I made, this one, the assigning computers literacy, uh, and just as a uh, reminder, that's what this looks like. Uh, and let's see if we can uh, peel this apart by whether or not they work in, uh, whether or not they have training in um, a social science. So, I think we're going to be doing few enough charts that it makes sense to do all of them by hand, even if it's like a little bit of a pain in the butt. So, um, and we're going to have to hand jiggle, uh, hand jiggle of everything basically to make it work, but we can make it work. Uh, okay. So. First thing that we need to do is we need to do this one. So the last one was social science training and uh, this should actually be in here. Social science training and tech. And I think the next thing that I'm interested in looking at is, honestly, I think the next thing that I'm really interested in looking at is the, um, whether or not having social science training uh, it has a relationship to, uh, your willingness to say that language, large language models understand like, mm, this one. 
Um, and the exact text for that was, if you would like a reminder, do you believe that large language models like BERT or GPT-3 are capable of understanding language in some meaningful way? Um, so social science training, and I'm just gonna call this LLM, LLM, understand. Uh, and then here, uh, I actually want the opposite relationship. So, social science training, no social science training. So I'm gonna want to flip these actually. So this one's gonna need to go first. And then if I look at this, I should get a table. Yes, I got a table. Uh, and, and if we look at the structure, if we look at the structure of that, social science training, uh, we should see that the first one is whether large language models understand, yes or no. Uh, does, is there a relationship between social science training and whether whether you if and I'm sticking with the social science training as one of my variables here because we've already done everything for it so I can just um, you know change things a little bit uh, do you make the same noises while programming when you work to the office? I don't usually talk aloud and explain what I'm doing while I'm coding unless I'm in a code interview. I don't think anyone does. Uh, all right, so looking at this, da, 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 and then uh, the no, and then, uh, I'm gonna put this on another line because I think that's a little bit long to see easily. Uh, and I know this isn't the neatest code, but that's okay. And let's just do this one and then look at uh, the social science training plot and see what that looks like. Cool. Um, and this was uh, social science training. And then this one will be no social science training. It's all coming together. Nope, I, I don't usually make sounds when I go to Lexi. Okay, so next up, but, uh, we want to make sure that we are updating everything and we'll end up with a plot with mixed data, which is not going to be um, usable. Da, da, da. Da, da, da. Uh, and I think we may need to... Uh, jigger these a little bit because I don't know that they're both going to be divisible by 13, but... Uh, and actually, I'm gonna do that as a second row as well. And if you're wondering how often I do my slashes the wrong direction, the answer is often. <laughs> real, real often. Uh, and for this one, I'm just gonna have it be even, because I think these are fairly even. Uh, and then the question was, do you believe that large language models like version of blah, 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 uh, because this is what is determining the color of the, uh, this is what's determining the color of the square is their answer to this question. So that's why I'm having it at the top as the, um, that's why I'm having it at the top as the uh, graph title so that it's a little bit easier to uh, parse what I am trying to share. All right, so that, 
I told you there'd be an issue if I didn't update everything, and sure enough, I did not. Uh, so it should be uh, people who've had social science training and then people who have not had social science training uh, and that. And all of this, like we changed everything in here, so I don't think it would make sense to do things like uh, we go that's what i thought oh okay so i should actually give the second one a little bit more space because it's got the um that attached to it fabulous okay so oh wait not in tech where's that coming from because this should be social science training the x lab should be this social science training Sorry, one of the labels was wrong. Okay, there we go. So if I just sort of jigger this around so it looks more or less even, um, what we are looking at here is the effect of someone having social science training broadly defined on whether or not they think that uh, large language models are capable of understanding language in some meaningful way. Uh, where green is maybe, uh, red is no, and blue is yes. Uh, and just sort of eyeballing it, it looks like um, not a huge difference. This looks like more or less the same pattern. Um, so nothing is really jumping out at me here. Uh, as a pattern, which is interesting, because I would expect I don't know. I guess I would expect people who had social science training to be more likely to say uh, either no or maybe than yes, but it looks like the proportions are fairly similar. So, um, and then, so we've got it working pretty well uh, with two. Now we're going to add the third. So this is the one thing that I was really interested in was the relationship between uh, beliefs about different types of technology, right? So. Yeah, and I think this will be the last one we do, and I'll pop this up on, on GitHub after we're done, uh, and we'll, we'll figure it out. So the next thing that I'm interested in is uh, LLMs versus spell check. And then spell check understands, okay. So then that looks like this, uh, and you can see, we don't have any missingness because I got rid of all the missing values, um, but now we have three distinct, um, we're gonna need three columns basically, right? So we're gonna have one that's a yes, one that's a no, and one that's a maybe. Uh, so let's, do that, <laughs> right? So our, our options are yes, no, maybe, and then lang large language models understand is the uh, the variable we're looking at. So I'm gonna call this one, uh, so it's the, the other one. So it would be spell check, yes, spell check, no, and then we're gonna need a third one that is spell check maybe. And at this point, uh, cause I'm doing, I think fairly helpful uh, names, I'm actually gonna remove all the comments and also from this one, cause those are also wrong. Okay, and then this one is Okay, relationship between spell check and LLM beliefs. Um, and this is sort of the, the base question that I asked on my Twitter poll. Uh, well, it wasn't a Twitter poll. This is sort of the base question I asked that started my Twitter poll. So I think it should be interesting uh, what people say. Um, and I think we can get there pretty quickly. So, uh, all right.
So this should be yes. Uh, and the X lab should be spell check understands. And that's that's actually not what I said. Uh, spell check. Uh, captures the lack of uh, spaces here is intentional uh intention okay i think that's good enough all right uh and then for this one it's gonna be the same as here except instead of yes we're gonna be doing no uh and then we're gonna say this one's no, so it's spell check doesn't capture intention. Doesn't capture intention. And then for this last one, we're doing the maybes. Uh, and this will be spell check might capture intention. Are there spelling errors? Almost certainly. I, I don't need to know about them. <laughs> we'll figure it out later. Right now, I'm just uh, making stuff work. So that's going to be spell check. Yes. And I'm actually going yeah, to do maybe in the middle and see maybe and then no. And I'm guessing that most people will say no. And I don't know if there will be a relationship or not. And that's something we could look at statistically. But I think looking at it visually first is more helpful. And then that's the same. So, uh... One, two, and then I'm going to give three, two, because it has the, uh, ooh, two, two, no, ooh. Is it because yes should be uppercase? Sure is, which means that's going to be wrong and that's going to be wrong. All right. So do you like me now? Fabulous. No error, no error, no error. Ooh, spell check. Slash. Fixed. All right, and let's look at this uh, beautiful chart. Nice. Okay. Uh, ooh. Whoopsie doopsie. We got a we got an oopsie. Let's fix that uh, real quick, and then we can look at the chart. And then we redo this one. All right. This was so much work. <laughs> That's. So this is the no, this is the yes, this is the maybe. Um, so if the no is over here, then I should give the no the uh, chart labels, which is not what I did. All right. Well, that's very fixable. Get rid of you. And actually, just for ease of mental modeling, I'm going to put these in the same odd order that they show up in the chart. All right. Do, 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 do. Now let's look at this chart. We done it. <laughs> uh, I actually do not like the way the, the line wraps uh, work on that. So I'm going to change them slightly. Sorry, I know I'm I'm tweaking, but I wanted to look good. Actually, I don't think we even need the second one. Get out of here. Oh, all right, y'all. That is the uh, that's the payoff. I'm just getting mosquito bites in my house. In my house. Um, yeah. I'll make myself a little bit smaller so we can see it. So the can I get smaller? There we go. I'm small now. Uh, so what we're looking at here is um, 
they are uh, broken apart by beliefs about spellcheck. So uh, people who say that spellcheck does capture tension are that one all the way over there. Um, you can see that it's most of, of a small minority of people. Spellcheck might capture intention is uh, a smaller minority, people hedging their bets. Uh, and then people who uh, say that spellcheck don't capture intention are the majority of them. Uh, and looking at these proportions, I think there is a relationship here. So I think the people who say that spellcheck might capture intention are more likely to say maybe than any other group, just looking at the proportions, even though they are smaller. Um, and then uh, those who believe that spell check capture intention, I think are much more likely to say that large language models also understand uh, language. So I think that there is uh, a pretty strong relationship there, it looks like. So yeah, uh, it would be cool to have <laughs> Uh, the waffles the same size. Uh, I think that's just going to be a, a question of me sitting here and resizing the chart to get them to look that way. Uh, I think it needs to be slightly bigger than will meaningfully fit on this screen. Uh, yeah. Uh, purple purple and says, is it fair to say that large language models are just a large amount of functions? Depending on the person that you are talking to's belief about functions, that might be misleading. But if you mean that in, you know, in the same way that function in a neural network being a universal function approximator is being used, then yes. But I think if you said that, most people would assume that that meant that large language models were primarily hand built, right? Like those functions were created by people, and that is not the case. They are learned. Um, so. I wouldn't say it's inaccurate. I would say that it is misleading. Probably, depending on who you're talking to. Uh, yeah, so we did it. <laughs> uh, it took a lot of uh, finagling, but we got there. Um, also, could people tell me what here is misspelled? Because there's almost certainly going to be something. I am, uh, as I mentioned before, dyslexic, and it looks fine to me, but. Uh, yeah, so making the size fixed. Uh, the issue with that is that the uh, relationship between these charts is determined by, not by the waffle chart, but by grid arrange here. So grid arrange is dynamically resizing things, which means that even if the, sorry, I'm really itchy. Um, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but I just got a bug bite and it's driving me up the wall. Um, so even if I set the size on the waffle chart itself, which grid range does not have access to, um, I wouldn't be able to have a consistent size across them. I'm gonna have to spend some time like dragging things around to get them to look good. But that's the answer to the question. I would say, I mean, I still wanna do some um, to do. Done, we did it. To done. Um, Sorry, that might be uh, very frustrating to some of you, but I find it helpful. Um, we also decided how to handle miss missingness. So what we haven't done is we haven't done any statistical analysis of this. We've just sort of looked at it with our eyes, which is a way of doing data analysis, and I wouldn't say it's a bad way at all, but uh, yeah. Actually, really quickly, oh my God, sorry, this bug bite is driving me nuts. I wanna go get some, some Benadryl. Um, but I'm also interested in sort of the relationship between this and referring to people as computers. Uh, so let's just quickly, quickly look at this. Uh, yes. And then, so for this one, yes. And then, no, oh, except comp agency. Uh, so this is, do you assign computer agency even if only jokingly? I'm not gonna rename these. I am gonna rename these. 
Let me just quickly go through and do this. refer to computers as if agents. What, how did I find that? Uh, as if, I think animate makes more sense. Uh, and this is ironically refer to computers agents. And then this will be doesn't refer to computers as agents. And I would say that most people probably do, at least ironically. Um, cool, cool, cool. That was changed, that was changed, that was changed. I think we're good. I think we're good there. So this should be yes, ironically, and no. Just really quickly, I'm curious, I don't know. Uh, and I'd really like to get all of these on the same graph and have like multi, you know, I want to make it look like the original paper that I, I shared with y'all, which I think is a cool way of doing the data, but unfortunately, uh, not quite so simple. All right, let's find my errors. Oop. Unexpected symbol, un. Oh, right, yes, that would do it. LLMs understand, not found. Oh, are you sure? LLMs. Interesting, did I? Okay. I only ran the second half of the pipe. All right, so this should be the same thing, but looking at, uh, Agent, let's do two, two, and two, I think. Okay, and so here is, uh, ironically, So I'm just trying to make it look a little bit more readable. Uh, okay, so here we have uh, the groups about whether or not they refer to computers as animate. Uh, and I would say that there doesn't look to be a huge, uh, again, just eyeballing it, there doesn't look to be a huge effect here. So certainly not as big of an effect as um, the relationship between spell check and bird. I would say that's a much stronger effect um, than we see here. Uh, just looking at this sort of difference. Um, yeah, which is interesting. Uh, Bobby says, you can see how many people do diff two from the total, e.g. 100 to 20, e 35 from on. You could use a simple bar graph to visualize it. I mean, I could, but I'm working with, um, you know, two separate things here, and I want to look at count, but also the relationships of things within groups, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, like a bar graph would be possible, but I don't think it would be the simplest way of conveying this information. Uh, <laughs> uh, Alexi says, I think a lot of students have a wrong impression that if you're good, if you do everything perfectly, uh, it's nice to see tutorials when the teacher struggles. Yeah, I wouldn't say that this is, I didn't feel as if I struggled, but I don't have a lot of experience with this package. This is not a type of visualization I make often or I don't know if I've ever made a waffle plot before, uh, but it's what I thought would be the best way of communicating this information. So, yeah. <laughs> the difference between masters and novices is that they struggle at different things. Yeah, I think that is reasonable. Um, anyway, so I think just sort of early findings, and again, I need to do some statistical analysis for this, is that um, based on the sample of 210 people, uh, people who uh, assign sort of understanding to large language models um, are more likely to also say that uh, spell checkers have some sort of mental model, perhaps, um, in some meaningful sense, um, and that other things don't seem to be particularly uh, as impactful. So referring as to computers as if they were animate doesn't seem to be particularly important. Um, 
going through all my various iterations and fixing them. Uh, whether or not you have social science training doesn't seem to be particularly important. Um, and I haven't actually looked at whether or not working at tech had an effect, but um, I don't imagine it will, uh, just sort of looking at the fact that there are so few people who didn't work in tech who filled out the uh, form, I don't think we have enough power to make any uh, conclusions about them. So. All right, so that is the stream for today. Uh, and before we wrap up, I wanna say thank you to all my wonderful supporters on Coffee. Um, I really appreciate you. You helped make this possible. I know some of you are in the stream today, so hi, thank you. Um, Yes, and I will be back on Thursday for our uh, usual coffee chat. We'll talk about news, um, you know, court cases, research that's come up, um, news stories, you know, stuff like that. Basically, it's been like the last week in, in NLP and machine learning. So, um, and if you are a monthly supporter uh, on coffee, you get all the links for that, all like nicely annotated and organized and everything. So you can refer to them later. So, um, yeah. Thank you so much for joining today. I hope this was interesting. Um, I do want to do the statistical analysis. I don't know if we're going to do that next week or not. Well, I'll figure it out. Um, so I'll let you know soon. Uh, yeah, have a great day. Uh, thank you, Docking. I appreciate you. Uh, and I will chat with you later uh, on Thursday, if not before. So I'll talk to you then. Bye.